I'm Marcel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And hello and welcome. I'm Eric Sean. Joining us as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, professor of medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center, who's also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. And Dr. David Samadhi, chairman and professor of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and chief of robotic surgery. Good to see you, Doc. Good Great to see you. you. Doctors, hello as always. We're going to start today with uh, that tragic news that comedian Gary Shandling, one of his early death, reminds us uh, about what happens when we get older and it is now under investigation by the L.A. County Coroner's Office. It was sudden and unexpected. It was an apparent heart attack and, of course, raises serious concerns for all of us about the possible warning signs that may have been uh, missed. So what are some of the most common heart attack symptoms in both men and women? We'll start with Dr. Siegel. I mean, he apparently had shortness of breath, called 911, and by the time the ambulance got there, he was passed out. So it, it is so shocking. How, how do we know if the same thing could happen to us? Because, Eric, there's a heart attack every 43 seconds in the United States, and it's the number one killer of men and women. So, and men and women are different, and we're going to talk about that. They don't have necessarily the same symptoms. I get a lot of those middle-of-the-night phone calls, or even middle-of-the-day phone calls. Somebody is saying, I have chest pain, I have shortness of breath, I'm sweating, I, ha I have a radiation down my arm or to my jaw, to my neck. How do I know whether to send that patient to the hospital? You know what I do? I decide based on their background. Are they smokers? Are they, do they have high blood pressure? Are, are they overweight? What are their risk factors? How old are they? And then I always err on the side of sending them to the hospital. If they have chest pain, if they have shortness of breath, shortness of breath I do not want to underreact. The other thing people out there should know is, Eric said it at the beginning, you call 911. You call 911 run right away when you wake up and you're not feeling the way you usually do. And the other thing you generally do is you take an aspirin. We want you to take an aspirin. If you have chest pain, if you're not feeling right, if you have fatigue, if you have nausea, there are atypical symptoms. But if you feel that pressure in your chest, you call 911 and you take but an David, aspirin. But David, you know, people say, I don't want to bother 911. You don't want to make a big deal out of it. You don't want to go in the hospital in the middle of the night. Well, Eric, you know, the picture that everyone has in their mind is somebody who is basically holding their, his chest, he's grasping for air, and before you know that he's going to collapse. We've, we've seen it in cartoons, but heart attack doesn't have to be that picture. A lot of times could be extremely subtle, especially among women, and women are always underdiagnosed. They go to the emergency room. Those diagnoses of heart attack is missed because we always think about men having these kind of things. So we really have to pay attention, and the message to a lot of people is, that if you have unusual symptoms, you're not feeling yourself, you may be breaking cold sweats, it's not always that chest pain that radiates to the arm, and that's really important. It's better to check it out. And in this particular case, and we don't know if that necessarily heart attack was the main reason, had he gone maybe a day, the night before, he could have been alive. And then, you know, uh, it's, it's the number one killer for women, which most people don't know, heart attack, right? Am I right? That it's the number right. one killer for women. And uh, a lot of times women, we, are, we tend to go, oh, it's okay, we'll just put it, put it off to the side. But I want to uh, talk about the major heart attack symptoms for women and then something else will get you, you to respond to it. So for women, it's sleep disturbance, it's indigestion, it's anxiety, which is something that we all, you know, kind of go through at some point or another. So I want you to tell us when we should go to the hospital. But before you answer that, I want to take a look at this and then get your, your response. Most surprising heart attack symptoms, sexual dysfunction, snoring, or sleep apnea, bleeding, sore, or swollen gums, puffy feet and legs, indigestion, or heartburn. Again, how do we know that we're not just, you know, just had some spicy food and just, you know, need to kind of sleep it off or take an, a tagment or something? And then sexual dysfunction? Yeah, so that's a very good point. And, and uh, when we talk about young men in their early 30s and 40s that come to the office and they say, Doc, I was perfectly fine a few years ago and now I suffer from sexual dysfunction, that's the early sign of heart disease. Why? Because the arteries in men, men's genitalia is much thinner than the actual artery, the coronary arteries in the heart. So the first sign of heart attack in young men is actually sexual dysfunction. Snoring is actually very important because sleep apnea, and the message to a lot of women out there is, if you see your husband or boyfriend is kind of snoring all night, it's not just a knowing because obesity and something that can clog up your throat and you go on without uh, oxygen during the night, that's a well, 
But if you're not obese and you're snoring at night? That's also, sleep apnea is one of the major risks mm -hmm. for diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. So make sure that you, they get checked, they go to these sleep labs and they find out. The other thing is maldigestions. A lot of people are taking these medications because they think it's from their spicy food, but the signs of heart disease and maldigestions are very common. And finally, oh, Mark, going to the dentist, I, let me just make one last point, is that, you know, inflammation in your mouth, gingivitis and periodontitis oh, that is, so is a major the risk factor that is so important. for heart yeah. disease. And so Mark, I want to talk to you about that because they say you've got to brush your teeth because the germs and floss, because the, is that true that the germs and stuff, if you don't floss, can and go in your circulation system and cause a heart attack? Absolutely, but I want to be clear on something. These are risk factors that would set you up for heart attacks. I don't want people out there to think, uh oh, my gums are bad, I'm yeah. having a heart attack. I want them to think, my gums are bad, I'm having sexual dysfunction, maybe I'm at risk for a heart attack. So it's not the same thing. The people that are prone to this, and by the way, the reason that happens with gingivitis, it's, it's inflammation. So an inflammation gets into your body, it gets into your heart, and you have a problem. So you're at risk. Now, one more thing I want to say for women out there, don't think we're telling you that you can't have chest pain. Or we say it's more atypical. You're more likely to have the fatigue or the dizziness or the nausea. But you might be having chest pain too. So don't say, oh, I have chest pain, can't be a heart attack. Women are more prone to the atypical symptoms, the sweating, especially diabetics, by the way. Diabetics are really prone to not having the classic. And here's the classic presentation. An elephant is sitting on your chest. Right. It's radiating down your left arm. You're short of breath and you're sweating. That's the classic presentation, but a lot of people are not having that. And hyperthyroidism is, is an issue? Hyperparathyroidism. So well, he basically was in a segment with Jerry Seinfeld, mm -hmm. and as a joke, he said, like, you know, I've been diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism, and he made fun of the fact that, you know, you're tired, you're puffy. What people should need to know is that hyperparathyroid is a gland behind thyroid. It has nothing to do with thyroid, and if you secrete a lot of parathyroid, your calcium can be high, and high calcium mm -hmm. can lead to heart disease. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he had the heart, heart Bottom attack. line, okay. don't ignore symptoms. Even if you think they're not major, yeah. go check it out with your doctor. Absolutely. Definitely. Right.